year 12 and welcome to another YouTube clip. Thanks for watching. Today we're taking a look at the last part of the role of human resource management. Remember HR is the first topic we look at at our school and uh, this will be the last part of this section, role of HR. We're going to be looking at the dot point called outsourcing and in particular not outsourcing of manufacturing and different um, or finance business function but outsourcing of the human resource business function and taking a look at domestic versus global outsourcing and the pros and cons of each of these. It's important that we get a good definition of what outsourcing is. Uh, I like to uh, use the textbook as I talk to you guys to make sure we get really good quality band six definitions. Outsourcing is when a company takes part of its business function, not necessarily its core business function, so when a company takes part of its business function and gives it to another company to complete. In this case, it is the outsourcing of the human resource business function, not operations. I know we should be talking about outsourcing manufacturing as say Bonds did when they outsourced the manufacturing of their um, underwear and other intimate apparels. An example that we could use for outsourcing with HR is that in schools, we often bring in external presenters to train or further develop our staff. Now, in terms of the HR function, and that's what we need to really be looking at today, okay? Outsourcing the HR function refers to a business taking part of the HR jobs or tasks, the tasks or jobs that's usually done inside the business and gives it or gets another business to complete this task. A couple of examples that we can use include the hiring of new employees, you know, whatever it may well be, if you're an electrician, you're not an expert in recruiting and hiring people. If you're a school teacher or a principal, that's not really your area of expertise, it's education. So you could bring someone in to help you screen uh, and interview new applicants for the job. Now, in terms of our pay increases, it's always something that's very touchy. You'll take a look at uh, employees. They'll want to have big pay increases, better conditions. You'll take a look at the the boss, the employer, they'll want the opposite of that. So sometimes businesses will bring in experts. They'll outsource these negotiations in terms of pay rises, etc. especially when unions are involved. Now, any other major dispute that might occur, including strikes, uh, cases of different levels of harassment, and uh, I personally have been victim uh, by the social science faculty of many levels of harassment towards me. So you might have the employer bring in an outside party to be able to uh, resolve these processes. And that's another example there of outsourcing of the HR um, faculty or function. Now, there's some pros and cons, some advantages and disadvantages of outsourcing. These often come when we talk about the discuss directive term, the advantages, the disadvantage. So why outsource? First, it allows a business to focus on achieving its core business objective. That's if you've outsourced the non-core business function. It's often more efficient and you can save costs. Not always, but usually. A quality you'll find often is a benefit and a disadvantage. How can that work? When you outsource, people are specialist in the job that you're giving to them, other businesses. So they're often very good at doing it well and therefore you can see an improvement in quality. When you outsource globally, people often are paid very little uh, and therefore the quality can suffer too. So it just depends whether quality increases or not. Some disadvantages of outsourcing, reasons why you may not want to recommend this if it was a recommendation question. Some employees who work in HR have lost their jobs. So if you're outsourcing um, operations, then workers will lose their jobs. If you're outsourcing finance or in this instance, HR, you no longer need those jobs. So that's gonna create issues. A loss of control. If you get other businesses to do your job, then you lose some level of control. And if you pride yourself on quality work, quality workmanship, then that could be an issue. It's also expensive to outsource HR. It's not one of the cheaper things to do so. So it may not actually be financially beneficial to do so. You'll have to weigh up these pros and cons as to whether you do uh, outsource or not. Now, based on the syllabus, it asks us to look at what contractors are. And then, you know, we often will outsource uh, HR to different contractors or other business functions to different contractors. We have domestic contractors 
or outsource domestically and international contractors where we can outsource internationally. So what's a contractor? And there's a big difference between a contractor and an employee. A contractor is independent from the business and is paid to complete a particular task or set of tasks. An electrician is a good example. Whereas an employee is a person who is not independent and is under the control. It's this level of control under the control of the employer. They are paid to complete the work that the employer, the boss, has asked of them within reason. You know, my principal can't go up and say, you know, Brownie you can go pick us up a cup of coffee. Uh, you know, you can try, but that won't be happening. So it's not reasonable. Uh, an example would be a teacher could be an employee or is an employee. Now there's this term contract of service or contract for services. And you need to try and remember those two things of service or for service or for services. An employee is under a thing called a contract of service. It's ongoing. It's regular. Okay. They're there all the time. Whereas a contractor is under a contract for service and they're paid for, for that service they provide. Now, difference between domestic outsourcing slash contractors and global, which is like international outsourcing or contractors. And they're directly in the syllabus there, domestic contractors, global contractors. So a business can choose to outsource domestically inside our own country, Australia, or do it internationally, globally. An advantage of domestic contractors or outsourcing is that they generally get better quality. Uh, they're paid higher wages, and so that reflects in that. Uh, that we have Australians doing the work, and therefore we speak the same language. We have the same uh, cultural background and knowledge of our customers. It gives uh, an advantage in that sense compared to internationally. Also, Australia is in a separate time zone to large parts of the world, and therefore we operate in our own time zone. Very few other countries do. We're going to outsource uh, on the other side of the world, then it makes it difficult to do certain tasks. The disadvantage, though, of domestic outsourcing is that it's expensive. You know, we take a look at the average sort of wage in Australia, you know, depending on the statistic or the source you use, it's there about sort of $65,000 a year. That's not paid pretty much anywhere else in the world. Therefore, it is pricey to outsource to get an Aussie to do the outsourcing job. Okay, the last one is global outsourcing, global contractors. If your business chooses this option, there are again a few advantages, lots of advantages, and that's often what we see, less so from HR, but more from operations with manufacturing. Again, we're having this HR focus today. Why would you do it? It's cheaper because of cheaper labor laws overseas. We know that overseas generally get paid less than our Aussie workers. It's cheaper because of exchange rate differences. And you can also take advantage of a particular skill set one country may have. You have this comparative advantage, each country can do things well. Like Aussies, we dig stuff out of the ground, the minerals, uh, we farm well, um, and our services are good. Our manufacturing is pretty rubbish. But other countries do that well, and so you take advantage of their skill set. Now, disadvantages. Although it's cheaper, that's an advantage, it's cheaper. The quality often can suffer. And I talked before about how quality can be good or bad, uh, depending on who you go with, whether it's international or domestic. But because they're paid cheaper, the quality often is not as good. And so you need to, as a business, think about your reputation, the quality of product you want, and weigh that up and see if that's going to be of use. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening again to one of the YouTube clips. And this is the last dot point that we've looked at here in the role of HR management. See you later.